we're gonna skip the pleasantries and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna jump right into the topics and i'm gonna kick it to you john right away this is your game this is your game of the week it's early thursday night football browns versus steelers in cleveland cleveland is still favored by minus four and a half mitch trubisky is looking like he's most likely going to be the starting quarterback for this for at least another week so tell me your thoughts and feelings on week three of your Pittsburgh Steelers after coming off a loss. Well, to give you a quick injury report, Javanian Clowney and former Patriot Chase Winovich are out for this matchup. It appears like Miles Garrett, Joel Batonio, and Jack Conklin will all play. It will be Conklin's yes. season open. Rest of the Steelers, of course, TJ Watt, second week on IR. I think the Browns any day of the week would take losing Clowney for not having to play against the former Depoy. With that in mind, the ultimate this week, as you New Englanders saw last week, is the Steelers stopping, or not stopping, but containing Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt. When it came down the stretch and the Steelers needed to get one stop with five minutes left in the fourth quarter, Big D, D I knew his nickname rather easily, Brandon, because you're in the group chat, Big D, Big D, Big, I'm like, stop, you're 20 seconds ahead of me, you're ruining the entire thing. Ultimately, this week for Pittsburgh is about neutralizing that Browns attack that opens up the play action. It allows them to take over any game and chewing the clock out. And for a Pittsburgh offense that has struggled to consistently move the chains and more notably put points up on the board, they can't lose the time of possession battle in this one. They will. I think in this game, it's going to be ugly tonight. It's going to be 10 plus punts probably because the Steelers offense is... You know, this kind of be a get-right week for them. After seeing the Jets hang up over 30 points on the Browns last week, that's, for Cleveland, not quite what I expected to be coming into the year with all their new additions. So if the Steelers, you would hope they'd be able to put points up on the board, but we don't know because Mitch Trubisky, this could be his last week starting. If you're going to put Kenny Pickett in there, why not set him up on a long week coming off of Thursday night football where he's going to go up against Joe Flacco on the Jets? Flacco can't be taken lightly. Mike Tomlin has compared him to Ryan Fitzpatrick, which I'm actually a pretty big fan of that comp. You know, there's two backup quarterbacks that can surprise you any given week. They can't be taken lightly. I mean, you never know if a former franchise, Flack, or Fitzpatrick wasn't a franchise quarterback, but those guys who have the experience, they can hang up 300 yards on you if you take him lightly. So, I think for the Steelers, realistically, it wouldn't be a shock if Mitch has a terrible game on primetime. They say, look, we're trying to win games, and Kenny Pickett gives us a better chance. And not only that, he's not your typical rookie quarterback. He has more experience starting than most. And in fact, he has post-high school just as much, much experience as Mitch when it comes to playing at the collegiate. Mitch only started one year, and Kenny started four. So, I mean, this guy is much more ready than I think for the NFL. And beyond that, He's been really bad the first two weeks. And George Pickens is one that Justin was very high on. I'm very high on. He had two targets last week and only one reception. He was getting open consistently. The Patriots were only sending a single safety look. And they had, uh, I don't know what cornerback it was on George Pickens. The other one was Jalen Mills. He was getting cooked by Deontay on the other side. Mitch has to actually get these playmakers the ball. And Pittsburgh right now, there seems to be this natural divide between offensive coordinator telling Mitch don't screw up the offense just take care of the ball and play it safe then there's the other side which is the one I lean on where these receivers are getting open the offensive line for the Steelers it hasn't been good in the running game but in terms of pass protection all of their sacks have been on Mitch they've done a really good job just being fine holding up in the pocket ultimately there are no excuses for Trubisky when this is your fifth year starting in the NFL, you don't get these excuses. There's a reason why he's been on three teams in three years. He hasn't put it all together, and it's simply embarrassing that with all the talent around him, he can't even move the chains consistently. So I'm ready for Kenny, but with that being said this week, it's going to be a low-scoring affair. Ultimately, like last week, Brandon, I feel like I'm making a mistake here. But I've got the Steelers winning this a close one. Uh, you know, my one right or my one Ron pick was the game we won so far in week one against the Bengals. I had the Steelers taking this one 21 to 14. I think that last touchdown will come in the fourth quarter, but until that point, it'll be a close one. Yeah, I mean, just to jump off of what you were, you know, your thoughts, uh, Mitch, who has thrown the ball 71 times through uh, two weeks only has 362 total passing yards at ranks 29th in the league. Um, 
Now, what's what? What are some positives for Pittsburgh last year against the Browns? They went two and zero, and Pittsburgh held Nick Chubb to sixteen for sixty one and twelve for fifty eight, no touchdowns. So that's a that's a positive for uh, for Pittsburgh right there, and they've done a a solid job. I'll say they've done a good job through the first two weeks um, against the uh, against the run. Um, now this is the first time since 2004 that Big Ben isn't a part of this Steelers Browns rivalry. And uh, to quote Mitchell Trubisky, I forget when he said this. It might have been after the Pats game, or it might have been a couple days ago. But quote Mitch said, "I've just got to get these playmakers the football. What, uh, whatever we are out there running." I've just got to get them the ball. It really comes down to me making better decisions, being aggressive, and putting ourselves in that position. I mean, he's basically saying what we're all saying. Like, yes, of course you've got to get these playmakers the ball. I don't think anybody's going to sit here and blame Chase Claypool, Pickens, Deontay Johnson, Najee Harris, Fryermuth for Mitchell Trubisky's shortcomings. It's it's solely Mitchell Trubisky. Um, yeah. Uh, for this game, though, I agree with John. I think it's going to be a low-scoring game. It's going to be a physical, close game. Uh, it doesn't look like there's going to be any major weather conditions. It says 60 degrees, partly cloudy. So that's good. Um, but yeah, for me, I'm going to lean solely on Mike Tomlin and my full belief in Mike Tomlin. And I think they're going to be able to edge out a win. But I do believe next week against the Jets, I think we see Kenny Pickett. Is there a, a, a worse quarterback matchup than this Thursday and Monday? Cooper Rush and uh, Cooper, Daniel yeah, Jones. Jones. Cooper Rush, Daniel Jones, Mitch Trubisky, and Jacoby Brissett. I'm not excited for really either one, but I guess the divisional, divisional matchup makes it a little bit more exciting. What? Going into this game, as Brandon mentioned, the Steelers have done a good job at least containing Nick Chubb and the, and the running game of Cleveland. So I'm going to roll with the Steelers this Thursday as well. Not because I'm a big believer in Mitch Trubisky because I am far from it, but more so because, like Brandon said, I'm a believer in Mike Tomlin. And then I look back at the matchups. The Browns and the Steelers could easily be 2-0 and if one play might have went their way. But – the Steelers have been more battle tested over the first two weeks of the season than Cleveland has. Steelers going against former AFC champion Cincinnati Bengals and then going up against Bill Belichick and the Patriots. That's a much tougher schedule than Baker and Carolina, sorry, Brandon, and the New York Jets with Joe Flacco. So the, the Browns really escaping by the skin of their teeth in both, both games. I think this is we're going to see just how much better Pittsburgh is compared to Cleveland. I think Cleveland was being uh, getting a little lucky these first two weeks. All of us weren't too high on them going into the season in the first place, especially without Deshaun Watson under center. It'd be a different story if he was there. But I, I think we're going to see what the Browns are. And that's a losing team with Jacoby Brissett under center. If there's one thing Browns fans can hang their hat on today is that in the last two years without T.J. Watt, the Steelers' record is 0, 5, and 1. With him, I don't know, this team is 8-2. and two. That goes to show how special a talent Watt is. But without him, the defense can't generate as much pressure because for an opposing offense to have to worry about T.J. on the outside, Alex Highsmith as your number two, who has the speed, the pass for us moves, and he's only developed when it comes to stopping the run, and then you got Cam Herod clog in the middle. Tyson Alulu, he's been a starter for over a decade, it feels like. And you add in Larry Onanjobi, who's been one of the better D linemen as well in the game. That's the best front seven in the league, arguably. When Devin Bush and or Robert Splinter are just doing their role, which is a little bit easier said than done. Bush has looked fine through two weeks, but it remains to be seen if he can actually keep that up. I hope he does. Um, so yeah, man, I mean, without TJ, I could be had him in both of these matchups last year. This is a much different matchup against stopping this run because the way the Browns can utilize their, their outside zone style scheme, it gets way more easier when you don't have, like I said before, the second or third best defensive player in football on the other side of the ball. So I think that's really going to neutralize his pass rush and it's going to make it much easier on 
Most importantly, Jacoby Brissett should just play his role, which is managing the game and making a couple of plays in play action. Ultimately, the team that makes more splash plays in this game is going to win. And quite honestly, that may just be a Nick Chubb 55-yard run. So, uh, No, your, your points are valid without TJ Watt. It's going to be a, a much tougher matchup, obviously. Um, yeah, like I said, my, my full faith is just in Mike Tomlin. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put my faith in a Mike Tomlin-led team uh, to really grit out a victory. And, uh, you know, for Pittsburgh Steelers fans, I, I, I just hope, you know, Kenny Pickett is the guy. Because if he's not, well, hopefully we find out the answer soon. And you're a smart man, I like Vegas, that has the Browns favored in this matchup. Uh, I'm looking at Bet Stamp. We'll promote it in a little bit. Uh, the Browns are 64% favorites to win this game. I get they're at home, and they're only favorites by three and a half. But still, I mean, you can't go up against the team that has had the upper hand in this rivalry for what feels like two and a half decades at this point. They beat us once in the playoffs, and that's really all they have over us. That's two years in the past, and that's what Brown fans will hold on to. So I'm surprised. I feel like the Steelers should be favorites still in this match. Yeah. Um, Justin, you got anything more to say on this uh, game? or uh, It's just going to be ugly. It's going to be very <laughs> ugly. Uh it's AFC North football. It's going to be whoever chips away the most. I think it's, you know, you said, uh, John, correct me if I'm wrong, but you said whoever wins this game is going to be based on the splash plays. For me, it's more time of possession. Who's going to tire out the defense more? Who's going to march down the field? Who's going to drag out the clock as much as possible? Jacoby Brissett's going to play a small game, so Mitchell Trubisky uh, take what the defense gives you. It's, it's going to be a, a low-scoring one, too. I, I have a final score of 20 to 17. This must be what 80, 80s football is like, right? Yeah. Yeah. Anything I mean, behind line of scrimmage, thumbs up. <laughs> one thing I do got to say, and then we'll move on, um, is uh, I'm – and I understand he's playing through an injury, right? Najee Harris is who I'm talking about. But – Here you know, we there's go. a lot of praise. Huh? There was a lot of praise you know, coming out of college for Najee Harris, a lot of comparisons to Derrick Henry. Um, I praised him coming out of college. I believed he was going to be legit. Um, it's been a rocky road for, uh, through his first uh, rookie season last year and the first two games this year. Uh, the Sierra's O-line really hasn't, wasn't good last year at all, didn't really give Najee any chance. But – you know, I I I want to see I want to start seeing Najee, you know, perform to the high to to his to the standards that we all expect him to to perform at. And uh, I don't know if this week is going to be the week. I don't know how badly the injury is hampering him, but you know he's got to get it going soon. Or I mean, if he's not playing well by the end of the season, I think a lot of people are going to be like, "That was a bad pick that that the Steelers made." late in the first round. And John, you're nodding your head no, but even you have said on times, I don't like running backs taken in the first round. There's caveats. There are caveats, but if he's not performing to the to the standards that you expected him to perform at, and that can be your old line's fault, or that can be his fault, or it can be both guys' fault. He's not performing. And that means that your first round pick two years ago was kind of a waste. And I'm just saying, I, I, I like Najee Harris. I like his skill set. I want to see him perform to a higher stand, to a higher level. I just, I just want to see it now.